got this all by yourself. Why am I here? Um, 2010, uh, 14 years ago, it goes by fast. It does. Okay, so you, you get the Haskins Award 14 years ago. You're in a chair similar to what Jackson's in. Uh, take us back. What did that award mean to you at that time? Maybe what were kind of, how that set off your professional career? Yeah, um, still surreal. I mean, you know, when I went to Georgia, I, I really wasn't sure where I would fit in on the team, if I would make the team, if I would do well in college. You just, a lot of question marks. And so, as a junior, um, I had a really great season. Um, I won SECs that year, I won regionals, um, played really solid for me. And, um, you know, I, it's still surreal seeing, seeing my name on the trophy when you, when you scroll down. I was just looking at all the names on the, um, the packet we got and just really cool to be a part of that. Uh, gave me a lot of confidence. That, that summer, uh, I had a great summer. I, I played really well in the US Open at Pebble Beach and um, going to Georgia and, and winning that award and, and being in college golf and being around all my teammates, playing in the best events um, in the nation really just kind of put me on the trajectory to being on the PGA Tour and getting better. And so just a really big stepping stone for me. And, um, you know, every time I look back and every time I hear practicing and I see my picture um, with the trophy, it's just surreal. It's really cool. And, you know, the Haskins Award, I'm sure everyone in the room knows it, but it's voted on by players and coaches, SIDs, College Golf Media. I mean, this award is separate from any other award where you're really just recognized by your peers that actually play in the same tournaments, coaches that are coaching against you. It's completely different than other awards that, I mean, you know how it is. It's, mm -hmm. it's There's different boards and policies and votes, and this is completely different. Yeah, and I think getting recognized by your peers is a big deal. I think even now when you have somebody who is, you know, doing what I do for a living and they give you a compliment or give you that respect, um, you know, promote your name in some way, it really means a lot because you know that they know that you're all going through the same thing and you, they know how hard it is. And so um, I've always loved that about the Haskins Award. You played on the Walker Cup team in 2011. Uh, actually, uh, this morning, earlier it was announced, uh, the practice session is set for next month in South Florida. Mr. Brendan Valdez and is going to join Jackson Coyvan at the Walker Cup practice session next month. Um, and you also played the Presence Cup. So any correlation between those two or are those just apples and oranges? I think there's a co correlation, just the team aspect of it. Um, the Walker Cup, we played at Royal Aberdeen. Um, it was very cold. It was very different than the type of golf that I'm used to playing. Um, and I played with uh, some of the same guys on that team that I played the Presidents Cup with, a couple of them. But um, the team aspect in golf is something I miss. That's something I miss uh, at Georgia, just going to tournaments with the guys, going out to eat every night with the guys, playing practice rounds with your team, um, practicing in Athens with the team. So I miss that. And so any taste of, you know, the team aspect, I I'm a big fan of. And uh, I just look back at those two, those two different, they're very different weeks, but just getting to be on a team is so cool. When you're in a team room, I know anyone that consumes kind of news from a golf channel or for media, they may say, well, how much do these pros care about a team event? You know, are they really all in? Um, what was your experience in there just kind of playing with your peers? You know, I know you're playing professionally on the PGA Tour, but now you're in a team environment. Was there that moment where it really kind of clicked like, okay, everyone's really all in on this? Yeah, um, I think... I didn't know what to expect. Um, there wasn't a ton of talk about what it was going to be like with, with the guys uh, leading up to the, to the event. Um, you know, I didn't have a ton of notice. I, I didn't play a lot of tournaments knowing that I was on the team. Uh, but, I, but I've known everybody on that team for a while now and, and played a lot with them. So, I, and, and I'm not super close with all of them, but when the, when the week started, immediately I, I was. There was, there was a, a bond. It was something special that... Um, Hard to describe, but I just all of a sudden felt like we were a part of a family and we we're about to go to war. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Well, uh, thrilled that you're here tonight. Let's uh, let's get this Haskins Award given out to Mr. Coyvin. Uh, Jackson, come on up.
So Jackson, I'm going to get uh, your coach up here as well. First of all, your freshman season was absolutely historic. He is the first player in history to capture all four major individual awards in the same season. First Auburn player in history to win the Haskins, first freshman since 2012. Uh, there are a lot of individual achievements that I know that we can uh, add on to that, but I think the biggest one for you was help lead your team to the program's first national championship. There you go. So joining Jackson on stage this evening is his head coach, Nick Kleinert. After eight seasons as a head coach at UCF, he joined Auburn in 2009. Last year led them to 10 tournament victories, seven in a row, capped off by the SEC championship and the national championship. I had to get this correct. Uh, your record as a team was 185 wins, nine losses, one tie. 46 one and one against the SEC. And he was awarded the SEC and National Coach of the Year, ladies and gentlemen, Nick Kleiner. Okay, take that. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> like that call? I saw it. <laughs> I'm glad, what, what, War Eagle sock, I'm sock? glad that Georgia Bulldog infomercial is over. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. I didn't even say where Justin Thomas went to college. I did you a solid right there. You notice that? Uh, let's start with a little bit of back information. Um, Jackson, uh, born in California, grew up in North Carolina. Maybe a little bit of a start in the game. How'd you get going in golf? Yeah, so uh, I just started hitting golf balls in the backyard. Dad gave me some plastic clubs and kind of took off from there. Uh, found a local golf course. Just kind of went there a lot. Played a lot of their sports, but was always a little better at golf than the rest of them. And can't, uh, come high school, I kind of just narrowed in on golf and took off from there. And, and Coach, you know, you, obviously UCF and then moving to Auburn in, in 2009. When did maybe you start, start to realize that, like, coaching was really kind of your path, your profession? Because... It's different for all coaches, it seems. So when was that moment for you? You know, I, I got started, um, I guess, in the summer of 2001. It's been a long time ago now. Um, I thought I'd do it about a year or two and then find a real job. That's kind of what I was thinking okay. at that time. Um, but I just fell in love with it. I fell in love with developing young people. I fell in love with helping people. Um, I just had that sense of camaraderie with the guys, and I really enjoyed it. And it was my way of still competing, but not playing professional golf, which I figured out after about four and a half years that I probably should have quit about three and a half years before that. There's a lot <laughs> of Russell Henry's really, out there, right? That's right, because they're yeah. really, really good. Um, but I really found out I get my competitiveness uh, through the team, and, and I really enjoyed it. And, and when did you, you know, recruiting is such a huge part of your, your profession. I mean, I see you at tournaments throughout the year, and then actually we don't see each other in the summer because I'm in amateur tournaments, you're at junior tournaments. So when did the name Jackson Coyvin first kind of get on your radar? Uh, he was pretty young. Um, he was the guy. I've actually he, got, he was pretty young is what you're saying. He was very he, young. Not He's young, still young. young. <laughs> okay, I was just <laughs> He was very young. I've got pictures of him when he was, how old were you when you played in the Future Masters that... 12. Why don't we 12. have those photos right and, now? Like, yeah, I've got them on my phone. Um, but he uh, had Auburn you know, shirt on. I think he drove through campus with his mom and, and, and saw campus. And, you know, I saw pictures of him in a bookstore buying an Auburn hoodie or an Auburn sweatshirt or whatever. And, and um, we, he was just on our radar early. Then, you know, my assistant coach, Coach Williams, was like, the kid's really good. He's a winner. You know, played a lot of stuff out in Northern California. He just kept winning and winning and winning. So there's value. He wasn't necessarily just chasing a certain tour. He was learning how to win. He was learning how to compete. And it was something that really stood out to us. And Jackson, uh, obviously there were other schools, I'm sure, interested in uh, acquiring your services as a collegiate golfer. Uh, you don't need to mention by name, just in case they're in the room. I didn't um, know there was any other schools in the country. No, yeah, right? yeah, I'm sure. Just, okay. <laughs> But if there was another school that was interested, what, what stood out about Auburn to you? I think just the team aspect. Um, the guys on the team are really good to me, and the coaches, I think, are the best in the country. Uh, the awards say so. But uh, Thank you, Jackson. <laughs> as, as people, I think they're some of the best people in the country. So that kind of drew me there. And then just the, the aspect of Auburn, um, just felt like I was at home. 
Now, Coach, freshmen typically make freshman mistakes. It's a lot for them. They're moving in from junior golf to, uh, you know, they're moving into college, and they have different, you know, circles and classes and things they need to get sorted out. It's a different structure. Teammates, um, what are maybe some of the things that, obviously, he didn't do much wrong last year, apparently, unless there's something you want to share. But, like, what, what are kind of the typical freshman mistakes that, that he didn't make that, you were maybe surprised that with any other freshman would make. He didn't make? Yeah, I mean, like, what what can you explain that he just kind of naturally made that transition pretty quickly? Hey, the first thing I want to say is I just want to say thanks for the team to be here. Um, I appreciate you guys. I love you guys. And uh, it means a lot for your support, support of the program in Fort of Jackson. I would say, you know, he... It's Jackson in particular. I mean, obviously, he went through the fall and had a lot of success. He's a young freshman. He's a typical freshman. He's worried about qualifying, worried about making the lineup. And he comes in and says, hey, in January, he's like, I need to speak to you. And Chris and I are like, okay, whatever, come on in. Um, you know, what's on your mind? He's like, I, I don't, like, I'm nervous about qualifying. You know, like, what do I do? And he's just, I don't know what you strung off in the fall, but it was like, I think, think you've, you've had one tournament outside the top five in the fall. And we just, and I just looked at him and said, listen, if, the, if there's gas in the van and there's jet fuel in the plane, you're probably going to be on it. Okay, <laughs> so <laughs> you just go worry about getting better and playing good golf. Um, but I don't, I don't know this, and he was just a, I mean, he's a pretty straight-laced kid, and, you know, all he does is practice. If anything, he probably maybe can over-practice. He needs to learn how to take a break, but you tell him to take a day off. He's like, I'm taking tomorrow off, taking tomorrow off. And then you look Bar out the comes. window, and guess who's whacking drivers? It's him. Bar never comes. <laughs> Uh, national Player of the Year sitting next to you. You're the National Coach of the Year. Um, Chris Williams, National Assistant Coach of the Year. Congratulations uh, on that achievement. It's kind of it's funny. He's a National Assistant Coach, but he's an Associate Head Coach, so I don't know what we do about that. But, but yeah. I'd like to change that award. He was actually uh, teammates with Russ at the uh, 2011 Walker Cup yes, at Royal Aberdeen. Yes, he was, 100%. Um, I was going to ask you if I'm missing someone, but you just recognized the team. Let's recognize one, uh, Mr. Ryan Eshelman, recent winner of the Tom Cousins Award. Um, go ahead and brag on Mr. Uh, Mr. Eshelman for us. He's just a first-class young man and, and uh, just thrilled for what he does to the program. He's been a SAC representative, Student Athlete Advisory Council for, I think, four straight years, never missed a meeting, and uh, he makes great grades. He's a good leader. He's very vocal, and I just can't say enough good things about him. And congratulations on the Tom Cousins Congrats. Award. So these are great accomplishments. You won, I guess, just about everything you could win last year. So naturally, you want to have the same success this year. How do you message this team after such an incredible year? How do you keep them motivated, grounded? Like, what's your what's your approach alongside? Um, you know, Coach Williams and Coach Alexander. You guys need to play better. Just kidding. There it is. Okay. That's, I don't... <laughs> there it is. Done. Okay. <laughs> but in all, all, all due respect, I mean, we've just, we talked as a team at the beginning of the year and said, you know, last year is in the past. And congratulations. That's great. But we got to flip the script. And this is a new team. It's a new year. And we got to keep get working. we got to keep getting better. And, and everything in life is earned. Nothing's given to you. And they know that. And we got to keep competing and uh, see where the chips fall in come May. Uh, Coach Williams has his experiences. You also, like I said, Buddy Alexander, he won a national championship with Florida. What are their strengths compared to maybe yours? I don't want you to, you know, mention your weaknesses. Chris They're is a lot more mellow than I am. Okay. So <laughs> I'm pretty type A. And then, but they bring, listen, they bring wisdom. I mean, Buddy brings, I mean, obviously he's been coaching. He's coach, coaching at University of Florida forever. And, and just the amount of experience and the wisdom and, and things that Chris and I can lean on him against. And then, you know, Chris just is an incredible person. He's an incredible recruiter. He relates really you know, well with the team. And he's a great player. And I think he brings a, a dimension of play in the game and, and competing and uh, always competing hard on every shot. And he just brings so much value to the program. And, and I couldn't do it without him, I can promise you that. Jackson, what, what do you think makes, I know what Coach said about the team, and everyone works really hard, but you have a lot of personalities on this team. We're going to get to Mr. Valdez in just a minute. But we have a lot of personalities on this team, and I see you guys a lot through, throughout the collegiate schedule, amateur schedule. Um, what's it like in the team room that you think makes this team gel so well to perform at a historic level last year and try and do it again this year? Yeah, I think we have a lot of guys that kind of balance each other out. Um, 
we all get along really well. Uh, some guys are a little more outgoing. Some guys are a little more sheltered. And it's just they kind of bring the best out of each other, um, especially in that locker room when we're all hanging out, whether it's at someone's house or just even getting dinner. It's always full of laughs and just a lot of bonding. You mentioned Williams Cup. I think indirectly just a few minutes ago, that was Jackson's worst finish last year. Just a just a terrible 19th place finish. Um, yeah, that was the worst performance of his season, uh, top 20. So you told me a couple months ago that that's the only tournament that you were rooming with Brendan Valdez. So I just want to know. We cut that off quickly. I just wanted to know, <laughs> Coach, who stuck with him this year? And how, how do you move past something like that? Well, we got the guy in the mustache back there. He's growing it back because he won it with the national championship last year. So Carson Baca. Baca is, is one of the best mustaches He in goes to bed show. at 8.30 because he texts at 7 p.m. He's like, can the team meeting happen? I have bedtime in an hour. <laughs> That's Carson and Jackson. They go to bed early. Okay. And who's, and who's Valdez with? Solo. No, he's, been, <laughs> <laughs> he's with Josiah Gilbert. They compliment each other. They're kind of like... Uh, Kind of like Beavis and Butthead a little bit. I'm not okay. sure. Okay. <laughs> is that fair? Guys, is that fair? They don't know who Beavis and Butthead is. They're too I do. Young. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm laughing. That's it's fine. Um, wow. Sorry. I'm just thinking of all the graphic design work with Beavis and Butthead I'm going to be doing <laughs> later on. Um, I, I tried to, to pick apart your season, and it's just kind of impossible. I guess the worst team finish was sixth which was at the national championship stroke play, and we know how that kind of ended. Were there any moments last year that were kind of, you know, rallying moments for the team? Like, hey, we need to have a, you know, closed door meeting. We need to kind of get back on track. You know, if we're just looking at your stats, it's pretty cut and dry. But there had to have been some moments where you had to kind of circle the wagons, and I'm running through as many phrases as I can right now, so I'm going to let you just take over. You know, I don't know when it, you guys have to correct me wrong from last year, but I don't remember, maybe it was in February, um, I think we won, we, yeah, won, won. February, we won somewhere in February, <laughs> yeah. but I just remember telling the guys in the team meeting, it's like, we're not going to lose the rest of the year, period, we're not we losing the rest of the year. Southern Highlands. That was after Las Vegas? We got second there to Oklahoma. Okay, it was after, after we finished second to Oklahoma, which we had a chance to win on 18 and we just didn't convert and then um, I truly believed in the guys and and we ran it we ran it off at seven in a row and um I think you know it's constantly challenging the guys I think I jumped Valdez a little bit um you know in in JM um at national championship um I kind of challenged them and I was you know I was pretty heated and, and it was pretty you know I mean listen you're, we're competitors right but I really challenged them to step it up in match play and because um, they didn't really perform that well in stroke play, and then they went out and they got the job done, and we couldn't have won without those two in the finals. Jackson, when you hear something like that as a freshman, when your coach says to you, we're not losing the rest of the year, how does that resonate with you? It's not like a senior that's thinking, well, this is my last shot at it, of course, but you're a freshman. Yeah, I mean, it just makes you want to go work harder. You don't want to let them down. I mean, obviously we talk about not having expectations, but – we're allowed to have goals, and if our goals are to win out, you got to work pretty hard to do that. And I think we all put in the work last year, and it kind of showed. The uh, fast forward to the national championship, so four rounds of stroke play. The the first day of match uh, matches are is a really long day. So you had uh, Virginia in the quarters, you had Ohio State in the semis. That's a very very long day. So instead of asking you what the night was like, I'm sure everyone was just completely exhausted. The finals were at what, like 3 p.m. local, I think, was the last group off, something like that. What does the coaching staff do? What do the players do? I'll let you both kind of go back and forth on this. Yeah. What do you do with all that time to kill when you get the biggest match of the year coming up? Yeah, it's just making sure you get enough rest, but not too much rest where you're, like, drowsy. Um, those 3 p.m. tea times can get hard because you're just kind of sitting around and doing nothing. Um, just got to get up, walk around, keep the blood flow going. And um, those those four days before the stroke play really take a lot out of you. So kind of managing, you know, what you eat and how much sleep you're getting is always really important so you're feeling good for the next day. Coach, Auburn's never won the national championship. What do you do during that day? Pace. <laughs> Pace around the hotel room. I think my wife told me to, to 
go out for a walk or whatever, but just really honestly make sure they're fed um, and make sure they know, you know, what the schedule is for the rest of the day and, and um, just go compete hard, compete for the brand, you know, number one, compete for each other, compete for yourself, compete for your families and um, let's go lay it all on the line. And if we do, if we execute, then we're going to come out victorious. The lasting image is J.M. Butler closing out that final match and then his teammates rewarding him by just tackling him on the 18th green, or 16th green, I believe it was, 17th, 17th green. Uh, you know, we see that on Golf Channel. We're lucky enough for us to see it in person. But then there's that 24 to 48 hours afterwards. No one knows what goes on with the staff and with the players. So can both of you kind of share your memories of those 24, 48 hours? <laughs> Just filter it a little bit for just you know what I'm doing. Just get, you know, just I'm gonna be brutally honest. I went to bed. Okay. <laughs> Baca, is that true? Okay, I, cool. I told you they were golf nerds. All right. <laughs> we we hung out a little bit, kinda walked around with the trophy or whatever, and um we just it just got to like ten o'clock and it kinda Hit us like a train. We just went to bed. <laughs> okay. If I give him the microphone to Valdez, is he going to have anything better to say, or is that about it? <laughs> I'll, I'll say this, though. I, we, um, you know, obviously, we, went, we didn't have dinner until, what, 1030 at night, it seemed like, in the clubhouse. And the clubhouse was packed. It still had all the people, you know, resort people from La Costa. And, and then the team came back up there in their national championship T-shirts, and, and JM's got the trophy, and the whole place just erupted in, in applause. And I thought that was kind of gave you goosebumps. Um, and, and then two, we were able to, you know, fly back the next morning and, and we get back to Auburn and we have a celebration at Tumor's Corner. We had over 2,000 people show up at Tumor's Corner. They closed down the streets. They sold over $30,000 in men's golf merchandise, national championship merchandise that evening. And we're sitting on the stage and we're up there with President Roberts and, and Athletic Director John Cohen and the mayor and, and uh, Buddy Alexander elbows me and he goes, they don't do this at other schools. I just want to let you know that. And it was just almost like gave you goosebumps, and it was just, it just made you realize you're so blessed and it's such a privilege to coach at Auburn. Let's, uh, absolutely, absolutely. Let's, uh, let's pivot a little bit to Jackson's uh, win of the Haskins Award. You obviously see what he's doing throughout the regular season. Uh, you know, you don't want to equate it necessarily to like a pitcher on a run of getting a no-hitter, but it seems like he's just racking up top fives, um, you know, SEC champion. And is there a time that you're thinking about what's coming for him with these awards, or do you just kind of not even, is it just something that's not talked about? Like, what was kind of the, the mood in those last, you know, the March and Aprils, uh, that, you know, as it's getting closer to the end of the season? You kind of know, you've been around, you know what's coming. Yeah, you just focus on the process. I mean, the, re the rewards are all result-driven, right? If you go focus on the process and you're able to execute, and that all just comes with it. And it's something that he earned, and I thought he played some really good golf. I thought he handled it well. He's just such a competitor. Like, he just wanted to get out there and compete. He didn't really care about all the, all the fluff that was going to come at the end. He appreciates it, but he knows that if he doesn't go out and compete and execute, then it won't matter. I no, it's been kind of a theme, like trying to pinpoint a moment of your season. Uh, I remember SEC match play, where you guys won that, and you were going up against Gordon Sargent in the finals. I believe you closed him out in 20 or 21 holes. How important was that moment earlier in your season, as, again, as a freshman? Was that a moment that you look back on saying, if I can get through this, this maybe sets me up? Yeah, definitely. I, Gordon's a great player, and... Um, I knew I got his draw, and I was kind of thinking to myself, they probably, I was, they probably just wanted to get a free point by putting him up against me, and I was just going to go give it my all. And uh, I was able to close him out, and that, that was a, definitely a big win for my confidence. Um, early, definitely a little earlier in the year, but it was definitely something I could piggyback off of. I'm going to give you the final word, but Jackson, before we open it up to some uh, questions. But uh, you're the Haskins Award winner. Again, this award is voted on by players, coaches, uh, people that are deeply involved with the world of college golf. It's, uh, it's everyone who knows this faction of the game, they're the ones that decide this. And, you know, it's just an incredible community behind it. I think you see all the people here tonight. There's people all over the world that follow and support the Haskins Award. I would have never asked you this question in May when you're going through trying to win a national championship. But now that you've had a few months to kind of let this sink in, 
is it different now than when it, you first got the award in, in May? Yeah, definitely. I think I've kind of growing to understand the significance of it. Um, obviously, it's great to get it in May, but getting it at the national championship, your brain's really focused on trying to win that national championship for your team. And the more time I've had to think about it and process that, it's just, it's grown on me a lot. And it's something I appreciate greatly. Well, appreciate both of you being here tonight and the entire team being here. Uh, let's open up to questions. Brian, you want to get this mic and circulate this? Okay, so if you have a question for either Coach Klein or Jackson, just raise your hand and I will semi-quickly make my way. Okay, good. We knew we could count on the Peas nice. family. <laughs> uh, Jackson, um, how did it feel to be a freshman and to walk into Auburn and try to prove your spot on the team? Yeah, so walking into Auburn for my first time, I knew I knew we had a really deep team, and that was my only goal was to be able to earn my starting spot no matter where it was. And I was fortunate enough to be able to do that my first uh, first go around in qualifying. And um, after that, it was I actually had a little slip up at the start of start of the spring where I was a captain's pick, but um, I didn't let that happen again. Fair enough. <laughs> Any other questions? Oh, oh, oh. Uh, strap in, everybody. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. So <clears throat> probably stand up. Do you think, Brendan? You should probably stand up. All right. <laughs> so your match play record last year was really good. If you could please go in depth about that and help other people who may be struggling in that aspect. <laughs> What's your match play record, Brendan? We don't have to talk about it. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Actually, he's 0-4 against the team the other day. <laughs> uh, Brendan, match play is just a different beast. Um, you know, uh, like Coach likes to say, match play is one on the greens. Um, and you can kind of beat players down with your putter. I think that's something I'm able to do well. Um, and it just kind of gets under their skin, and they start pressing a little more. And if I can just keep making putts, uh, I know I can beat them mentally. And then if I can trust my game, I'm going to beat them. Just, just to be clear here, uh, Brendan, you do have a national championship ring, right? I do. Yeah, OK, good. All right, good. <laughs> Any other questions? I have a question and an offer. Uh, first of all, I'd like much? to. I'd like to. <laughs> no, he's he's staying at Auburn. But I I would like to uh, to ask how many times you have, uh, coach you have brought the team over to play here at the Country Club of Columbus. Uh, your thoughts on the Donald Ross design and an offer that any of these guys are welcome anytime. And we have a one o'clock back tee group. If they would like to play, give me a send me a text. I'll make sure they're on the right team and everything will work out fine. But <laughs> but I, I think you got Brendan Valdez who's in. <laughs> Me and Valdez next Saturday. But no, I am curious about your thoughts on the golf course, how often you bring the team, and uh, just maybe some feedback. Yeah, we come over a couple times a year. We typically come over um, in the spring semester, um, in January, February. Um, we like to kind of prepare. The greens are pretty fast then, and they're really small. Um, I think it really helps with your wedge game. Um, it really helps you around the greens. And you got to think out here, too. you got to really manage your game. you got to think your club selections are correct. Um, off the tee, and, and uh, I, I love it. I love it because it's different, and it kind of gets under these guys' skin a little bit, and that's kind of what the old Donna Rock courses do. We're, we're under an Auburn regime, so I would, I would come to the club as much as you want for at least – what do you have, Jason? How much longer is president? Five months. Five. Ooh. <laughs> better Ooh. hurry up. Better hustle. <laughs> better hustle. Does anybody else have a question? Coach, I, I, it was said tonight, but – but it, I just want to make sure, and Ben, I want you to repeat it. Can you repeat one more time what Auburn's record was against the SEC last year, mindful of the fact that how many SEC schools were in the top 25? Most of them? Probably uh, nine. 46 1 and 1 against the SEC. I'm not sure that's ever happened. That's pretty impressive, and I haven't hit a shot yet. <laughs> Keep it that way. <laughs>
All right, this is your last chance. Okay, I have two announcements. Um, my first, well, let me do my second announcement first. How about that? We do still have a silent auction that has got some wonderful Auburn paraphernalia as well as other schools are represented. That's in the Wildwood Bar. We'll leave that open for about 10 more minutes. So uh, some of you have bid. Some of you probably should check your bid and make sure you haven't been outbid. Uh, the second thing I want to say, Im importantly, is to thank everybody in the room again for being a part of the Haskins Foundation, for your support, your love, your continued um, embracing what we do. We could not do it without you. We couldn't do it without the Country Club of Columbus, the home of the Haskins and Annika Award, the home to Fred Haskins. We're so fortunate to be here. But especially tonight, thank you to the Auburn Men's Golf Program. You guys have been fantastic. Thank you for showing up in a big way, and thank you for helping us to have a really big crowd. Everybody, please be careful going home. And uh, we will see you next year if we don't see you sooner. Thank you. Thank you.